Happy Friday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It is that time once again where you get an update on what's happening out there in the tropics. Of course, we do this every single day as long as we are officially in our hurricane season and that hurricane season lasts all the way through the end of November. We're getting close to the end of the second month of our 2023 hurricane season and we've already had four named systems in the Atlantic Basin. Hopefully we won't have too many more, but we know that August and September are usually the busiest time. So we will be watching things closely. We're getting closer to that typical peak of our hurricane season. This is the system of concern at this point. This is a tropical wave that kind of came off of the coast of Africa not long ago. It is now pushing into portions of the central Atlantic and it is now forecast to have a medium 60% shot for development over the next seven days. The next 48 hours, it's still going to struggle because it's in an environment with a lot of shear and also some of that Saharan dust. But as it pushes farther to the north and west, it will get into a more favorable environment for development. And so we're giving it a low shot for development over the next two days, just a 20% chance, but a 60% chance for development over the next seven days. So we're talking about maybe a tropical depression by early next week. It could become Tropical Storm Emily or maybe even Hurricane Emily. Not what you want to hear, but here is the bit of good news. Notice the track right now pushing off to the west northwest, but it's going to make a sharper turn off to the north over the next several days. So that should actually keep it off to the east of Bermuda and it should keep it far away from the US as well. So I don't even think it's going to get close to the east coast of the US. So even if it does become a tropical storm or a hurricane, I don't think we'll have to worry about it. This system we do have to worry about because it is already spreading heavy rain for portions of the Florida Peninsula, southeastern Georgia, and parts of the Carolina coast from Charleston back down through Savannah, Jacksonville, Daytona Beach, and even into Orlando and Miami. This was a tropical disturbance that we were monitoring earlier in the week. It had a small chance to develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm but it kind of ran into an atmosphere that was not favorable for development. So it kind of fell apart, but then it kind of got its act together a little more today. But since it's already pushing onto land, we're, going, we're giving it rather a 0% shot for development over the next two days and over the next seven days because it's already moving on shore. And of course it is losing that fuel for development as it moves on shore and off of the water. Of course, the Systems need to be over water to continue to strengthen and get that fuel for further development. So thank goodness it's moving on to the Florida Georgia coast. We don't have to worry about it becoming a depression or storm, but still rounds of heavy rain will be possible over the next 24 to 36 hours for portions of Florida, Georgia and the Carolinas. Let's zoom down to the south. We have another area of concern that we're monitoring, but this one also just a very slim shot for development. This is going to be in the southwestern Caribbean Sea, very close to Central America, just a slim 10% shot for development over the next few days because it's so close to land. It's very close to making landfall across eastern portions of Central America. So it's going to spread some heavy rain and some gusty wind to that portion of Central America, but it's not going to blow up into a big tropical storm or hurricane because it is moving onshore over the next 12 to 24 hours. So it's not going to be a big issue elsewhere across the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Things are fairly quiet outside of those systems, but of course we'll continue to monitor that wave in the central Atlantic that could become tropical storm or hurricane Emily. Let's move into the eastern Pacific and we have another system. You see where the red X is located. This system has a chance to become more organized over the coming days, over the next two to seven days. And if it gets its act together, it would be named Eugene, maybe Tropical Storm Eugene or Hurricane Eugene in the eastern Pacific. Movement is to the west, to west northwest around 15 miles per hour. And it is in the red and that is because it has a high chance to develop into a tropical cyclone over the next seven days. Just a 10% shot for the next 48 hours, but a 70% chance for the next week. So right now we're not expecting much development over the next few days, but as it kind of rides right along that southwestern Mexican coast, as it gets into this area highlighted in the red, that is when it could blow up and become a problem just off of the coast of Mexico. But it is moving 
off to the west northwest so i think the majority of the impacts of that will stay out over the water so good news there let's move back to the atlantic and we have been tracking this saharan dust for weeks of course this dust rolls off of the african coast and pulls in that drier air into the upper levels of the atmosphere kind of stopping or hindering a lot of that storm development for these tropical cyclones but some of that dust is kind of starting to fade for parts of the atlantic so we may have a window for that tropical wave in the central atlantic to develop into emily next week so we'll be watching that closely it also looks like a lot of that Saharan dust that we had across the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean kind of starting to disperse or fade or wind down. So that means we could in the future weeks start to see more favorable environments for development of these tropical systems. Once we get rid of that dust, things could get active quickly because we have such unusually warm waters out there in the Atlantic. This graphic showing where we have water temps in the Atlantic four to six degrees above average, and it covers a big chunk of the central Atlantic. That means sea surface temps are above the norm, well into the 80s for much of the Atlantic and into the 80s as well, even in the 90s at times over the last week for parts of the Gulf and the Caribbean. But right now, middle to upper 80s for those water temps. So that acts as that fuel to rapidly help these systems to strengthen, grow and intensify. And that is exactly what we have. So we're going to be monitoring things closely because even though we don't have anything headed towards southeast Texas right now, things could get active and start blowing up pretty quickly. We've already had four named systems so far for this hurricane season. Of course, Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don. And of course, we had that one unnamed system way back in January, back during winter time. So we have had all of these systems so far and we could potentially have several more. Of course, the Colorado State University forecasters did update that hurricane season forecast to an above average season expected. So even though we don't have a ton of action going on now, we could end up using several of these names on this list. We could have Emily as early as next week and then Franklin, Gert, Harold, Adalia and Jose would be the next names on the list, at least for the Atlantic Basin. Eugene would be the next name on the list over towards the Eastern Pacific. So we've got several more weeks to deal with this and it's going to go all the way through the end of November. We're wrapping up July in a few days. However, the busiest portion of hurricane season, usually between August and September, that actual peak right around September 10th. And that is usually when we start to get those big time systems, maybe even some major hurricanes popping up across parts of the Atlantic and potentially the Gulf and the Caribbean. So we'll be watching it closely. Of course, now is the time to prepare while things are simmering down. They're quiet. Not a lot going on for us with the tropics. Now is the time to think about your evacuation plan, which routes you would take. Make sure you have the proper insurance that you need, especially that flood insurance and go over your family's hurricane emergency plan before things get a little rowdy on us. Of course, you also need to download our Fox 26 weather app for tropical weather updates, forecast cones, our follow me feature. And of course, any hurricane watches, warnings or other tropical alerts will be on there as well. Also, you get your local alerts. It's all about the heat right now locally. So make sure that you stay safe out there and keep cool because that heat wave will only get worse. But at least we don't have any tropical storms or hurricanes headed our way. Well, that's all I have for you for this Friday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy your weekend and stay safe out there. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade.